Well, good morning and thank you for joining me as we worship the Lord in morning prayer on this Wednesday. I'm going to begin, as I have been doing for the last few days, with a hymn from the choir of St Mary's and it's called Jesus, Lover of My Soul. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day that you have made, as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 132. O Lord, remember in David's favour all the hardships he endured. How he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob, I will not enter my house or get into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. Rise up, O Lord, and go to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness and let your faithful shout for joy. 
for your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed one. The Lord swore to David a sure oath, from which he will not turn back, that one of the sons of your body I will set on your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and my decrees that I shall teach them, their sons also for evermore shall sit on your throne. For the Lord has chosen Zion, he has desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place for ever, and here I will reside for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless its provisions. I will satisfy its poor with bread. Its priests I will clothe with salvation and its faithful will shout for joy. There I will cause a horn to sprout up for David. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed one. His enemies I will clothe with disgrace, but on him his crown will gleam. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first test, our Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 17, and beginning at verse 1. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the Israelites, and get twelve staffs from them, one for each ancestral house, from all the leaders of their ancestral houses. Write each man's name on his staff, and write Aaron's name on the staff of Levi. For there shall be one staff for the head of each ancestral house. Place them in the tent of meeting before the covenant where I will meet with you. And the staff of the man whom I choose shall sprout, Thus I will put a stop to the complaints of the Israelites that they continually make against you. Moses spoke to the Israelites, and all their leaders gave him staffs, one for each leader, according to their ancestral houses, twelve staffs, and the staff of Aaron was among theirs. So Moses placed the staffs before the Lord in the tent of the covenant. When Moses went into the tent of the covenant on the next day, the staff of Aaron for the house of Levi had sprouted. It put forth buds, produced blossoms, and bore ripe almonds. Then Moses brought out all the staffs from before the Lord to all the Israelites, and they looked, and each man took his staff. And the Lord said to Moses, Put back the staff of Aaron before the covenant, to be kept as a warning to rebels, so that you may make an end of their complaints against me, or else they will die. Moses did so just as the Lord commanded him, so he did. Our canticle today is called A Song of God's Grace. Blessed are you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for you have blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You chose us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before you. In love you destined us for adoption as your children through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of your will. To the praise of your glorious grace, which you have freely bestowed upon us in the Beloved. For in you we have redemption through the blood of Jesus, the forgiveness of our sins. According to the riches of your grace which you have lavished upon us, you have made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of your will. According to your purpose which you set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. After Jesus had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly, but was ill and close to death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and heal his slave. 
When they came to Jesus, they appealed to him earnestly, saying, He is worthy of having you do this for him, for he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore I didn't presume to come to you. But only speak the word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And if I say to one of them, Go, he goes. And if I say to another, Come, he comes. And if I say to my slave, Do this, I know my slave will do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd that followed them, he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. As children, my siblings and I always knew that if my dad made us a promise about something, his word could be totally relied upon. So much so that if he said, I promise, we had faith enough to know that it was as good as done. In today's society, it seems that not much value is placed upon someone's word, and that's probably because it can be so easily broken. Is a promise always a promise? Sadly not. And because of that, I guess we have learned to hold people's words lightly. And this, I think in reality, has filtered also into our spiritual lives, so that what we read and hear as true might not always be true for us. After all, how often have we listened to manifestos made by political parties only to watch it disintegrate once they are in power? In that reading I just read from Luke's Gospel, Jesus, we heard, was approached by a centurion. Well, the elders sent on his behalf because the centurion clearly valued and respected Jesus and he didn't want him to be offended by him being approached. And so he asks Jesus to give his word. Clearly that centurion believed that Jesus had power over life and death and that his word was absolute. And so yes, his faith was indeed great. I wonder how much do we trust the words of Jesus? Do we truly believe the words that he says as the centurion did? When Jesus says something, do we regard it as absolute? Or do we sometimes wonder if he might change his mind? In the book of Hebrews, we read that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And so how he feels about us, how he views us, never changes, irrespective of our unfaithfulness at times towards him. His word is as good as a promise and can be totally relied upon as absolute. So when Jesus says something in the New Testament, when he behaves in a certain way towards someone, he hasn't changed. Jesus still says, I want to heal you. He still says, I want to forgive you. He still says, I love you. I'm going to read um, a piece from Colin Urquhart's book, My Dear Child. I don't have to explain my actions or justify myself before people. I am righteous, and so I always act righteously. I am love, therefore I always act in love. I am faithful, and I always act faithfully. My dear child, you must understand that I will never deny myself. I will never act contrary to my nature for I reveal myself in what I do. I have always been faithful to you, even when you have been faithless. I have been utterly reliable and dependable. I have been with you always, loving you through every crisis, watching over you with tender care, even when you have been determined to pursue your own course and not mine. I have also seen your impatience when I have not answered prayer in the way that you wanted 
and then later I have seen your relief that I didn't answer you in that way. So often people judge me by the failure of my children, but I am never responsible for their sin. I am responsible for their pardon, their forgiveness and their restoration. If I was fickle as some people imagine, this would be a crazy world. There would be no order and only chaos. But I haven't only created by my word, I sustain creation by my word. If I was to be unfaithful to what I have said, the whole universe would go into confusion and chaos. The reason why there is so much disorder in the world today is because so many listen to the lies and the deceit of the enemy, placing themselves under his control. He deceives. I am faithful. So I can truly say that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. I watch over them to ensure that they are all fulfilled. So let us pray. Gracious God, you call your church to be a shining witness to your love and glory. Lord, please fill our hearts with joy and gladness to live the good news that we proclaim. Help us in our own lives to bring fulfilment the hope of your word. Lord, you challenge the rulers of this world with justice and compassion. Please bring release to the oppressed, shelter to the homeless and food to the hungry. Lord, you affirmed those with you on the hillside by calling them the salt of the earth. Lord, we pray for all whose labours go unnoticed. Lord, help them to uphold our common life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, when we are weary, give us strength. When we falter, urge us on. When we stumble and fall, lift us up. Refresh and sustain us with your never-failing streams. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for the reminder today in that story of when you met the centurion and healed his servant, that Lord, your word can be totally relied upon as the truth. That Lord, when you say, I love you, you truly do love us. When you say, I forgive you, our sins are cast as far away as the east is from the west, and Lord, you choose to remember them no more. Help us, Lord, to be reliant upon your word, to so totally trust you and to trust in the words that you say about us, our families and our friends. Lord, in you we live and move and have our being. And you hold everything, all of creation, in the palm of your hand. Open our ears, Lord, to hear your words this day. To hear those words of peace and compassion, joy and love, healing and forgiveness that we so need to hear. For those, Lord, that we know to be unwell at this time, we ask that we might hear your words be healed. For those, Lord, who are fearful, we pray that we would hear your words, peace be still. before you those who have asked for our prayers, those we know who need to hear your voice this day. In our own 
church family here, Lord, we pray especially today for Rose Nawusu, for Joe Wisdom, for Debbie Rastel. We continue, Lord, to pray for your healing for Kim Brown. And further afield, Lord, we pray this day for Dinah and John Rogers. We pray for my parents, my brother and my two sisters. And for those, Lord, whose anniversary of death falls at this time, we pray that the comfort of your Holy Spirit may fall upon them they may hear those words, I am the resurrection and the life. That those who believe in me shall never die. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a reminder that tomorrow um, at the same time, 10 o'clock, we will be having a communion service from St Mary's Church uh, here in Sandersted, as opposed to morning prayer, um, be that it is Ascension Day. And so we will celebrate that day um, with the Eucharist. So God bless you.